facebook.com slash Jack Riccardi, and our poll question's right there as well. On Gang of Four today, he's the keeper of the cakes at the Magnolia Pancake House, Robert Fleming. Robert, welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be here as always. And uh, we're going to be seeing you and your folks over there. In uh, merry moments, yeah, as a couple well. hours for yeah. our monthly listener lunch. Indeed. Looking forward to that, and I know very they good. are uh, as well. Business is good. Business is very family good. Family is good. And Everybody's great. World's good. Just back from a week of hiking in the mountains of Utah to clear my brain. Oh, is that what it takes? Yeah, that's what it takes. Oh, okay. Now, that's what do you call, I don't want to... I, I like it. I don't know what you refer to that piece of, piece of headgear as. Would that be a beret or a... Well, actually, I mean, this style of cap is called an, uh, an ivy cap. Uh, some people say, oh, geez, you, you know, you're working, wearing hats just like Samuel L. Jackson. I said, let me tell you something. I was working this side of the street before Sam Oh, came is that along. what it is? Okay. Someone needs to have a conversation with the man. He's working not, He's working my look. So he has the Robert track. Fleming look, not exactly. the other way around. Exactly. Oh, okay. All right. Well, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with that for the next 90 minutes. Very good. Uh, <laughs> also with us on Gang of Four, Carlos Abelar is our number one Ron Paul supporter. And I hate to say that's all we know about him, but that, in fact, is all we know about him. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Um, yeah, for all we know, he could I be was, an Olympic athlete. I was driving over, I was thinking that uh, maybe we should like change up the intro, and maybe uh, instead of uh, being the Ron Paul guy, maybe uh, I'm not a Republican insider, but I'm a Republican West Sider. Oh, I like that. Okay. <laughs> all right. I like that. And um, also with us today, comedian Jay Lafarge, who's you know, very interested in politics and current events and all this stuff as well, and, and you talk a lot about it uh, in your routines. Yeah, yeah. I, um, actually, I've uh, been lucky. I did the, uh, the bear... Kind of well, actually, it was a Hispanic Republican Party fundraiser they did. I remember you talking about that, yeah. yeah. How did that go? It went really, it went well, because who better to represent the beliefs of the large Hispanic population than a white man from New York? Absolutely, that's what so, I say. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, and, and tonight I get to do uh, Lackland Air Force Base, so. Oh, good. Yeah, a lot of fun. And, uh, and by that you mean perform there? Sure, we'll say that. <laughs> we'll say that. All right. Perform our training acts. Perform, yes. All right, so on our gang here, we talk about the big stories of the day. This was a big topic with our callers last hour. We're asking it, uh, asking about it on our poll question today. Uh, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta responding to a letter he received from the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, which uh, basically was Boehner asking, can you explain why, now that we know emails were coming in and there were several hours during which top officials of the government knew that the Benghazi compound was under attack, knew that there were Americans trapped inside, going from room to room, trying to evade these attackers. Can you explain why um, you didn't have uh, assets in place or a plan or an attempt to rescue uh, or, or extricate those Americans? And Panetta held a news conference and responded to the letter by saying there wasn't enough information to deploy forces to Libya at the time of the attack. The quote is, you don't deploy forces into harm's way without knowing what's going on, without having some real-time information about what's taking place. He also says, though, that they had pre-positioned Marines offshore and in uh, Tripoli, the other big city in Libya, uh, because they knew it was the 9-11 anniversary. So you knew that was there was the potential for trouble. You were preparing for it. But then when the trouble happened, you didn't do anything. And the reason you're giving for not doing anything is that you didn't know what these troops might be getting into. I, I don't get it. <laughs> well, like you had said earlier in the week that, if anything, it shows that the, the inept of any government agency, whether it be uh, the military, um, you know, a lot of times before I, get it, I got more into foreign policy, I used to just blame Bush for 9-11, but as you get into it, you can't just blame Bush. It was a lot of factors involved that led up to 9-11, and this too, you just can't blame Obama. There's a lot of factors that led up to it that they have no control of, but if anything, it really just shows that um, this happens, you know, and that um, it being a political uh, time leading up to the, to the election of the president, it's going to be uh, even hotter to try to bring blame to the president, but I think that he is responsible for it at the end because if he's able to get credit for pulling the trigger for uh, uh, for killing uh, Bin Laden, he has to also get uh, the the repercussions of. Yeah, not, where, where uh, was uh, the gutsy call here? Yeah, you know, there's a, there's an old saying in business: if it happens on your watch, you get the blame or mm -hmm. the credit. It's just how it goes. But what I really want to know is how do we send a U.S. ambassador into the, probably one of the hottest spots uh, in the in the world right now with everything that's going down there? 
And for a security detail, we basically give him the equivalent of rent-a-cops because that was his security detail was Libyan contractors, mm -hmm. rent-a-cops. Well, and, and as we talked about yesterday, that militia, the February 17th Brigade, turns out to be an offshoot of the terrorists who attacked the compound and Sar al Sharia. So we didn't even hire the right rent cops. Right? Exactly. We, we hired we hired to to guard your restaurant. We we hired uh, people that are addicted to sugar. Exactly. You know, and then we wondered why. What, geez, what happened? But Jay, isn't it interesting that for the first ten days, this administration knew exactly what happened. Uh, they knew the whole situation on the ground. It was a movie review gone amok. We 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 can explain it all. Now they're saying we didn't have enough information to know what the troops were getting into. You know, I can't I can't really fault. The administration for what they did, and I, I'm the first one to point the finger at Obama for anything. It's terrible, but the uh, oftentimes when anything happens like this, there is a lot of second guessing. There's a lot of false information that was given, and they also have to they have to filter things. And unfortunately, ten days they're still trying to figure out how to put a public face on it. I mean, that's every but, administration. But don't you think? Don't you think that this is so typical? I mean, well, oh, yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's Republican or Democrat. It it's, doesn't. It's it's so typical. It's like you know what. There's a screw up here. We screwed up. Cop to it and tell the truth from day one. Put because in the hot once zone. you start down that slope, you're down that slope. There's no way to turn around and go back up. You cannot unring the bell. No, no, you can't. But I think saying putting them in the, one of the hottest areas uh, as far as security goes in the world and not having proper security is ridiculous. And as far as our embassies, I thought our embassies are usually guarded by Marines. Yep. And that's, I thought that was the normal, especially in an area like that. Uh, we don't need Marines guarding our embassy in Italy. I mean, we could have a couple Swiss guards, we'd probably be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you're in a Middle Eastern country, you need a platoon. And, and you need highly dedicated, motivated individuals who are going to guard our people. But we have this idea that we want to have a what they call small footprint in these countries. That we, if we put our troops in and they're armed and they're pointing their uh, weapons outward at the people, that runs counter to this message we're trying to send about embracing and we're not threatening and we're but not that's your the enemy. that's the biggest lie we're telling right there because we're not course, embracing of course. we don't want <laughs> but you there are horrid human beings over there who hate your us. your reality which i agree with is colliding with their fantasy which is Good. that the, the the world has been made over by the election of obama that now we're not their enemy anymore they've they've changed their perception of us they realize now that we didn't mean any of that other stuff we said for eight years and we're really their allies and so if you have to put marines in it, it, it gives the lie to that whole idea yeah but i think at the end of the day now we know that 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 con that that narrative is just a canard they haven't changed we haven't changed their minds and we're not going to change well their i'd like to, i'd like to i mean i'd like some follow-up you prepositioned forces because you thought there might be trouble there was trouble. Well, and here's the other thing is you had a drone in the air watching, and you were able to send in a relief drone because the first drone was running out of gas, yet you couldn't scramble some F-18s from Aviano Air Base, which could have been there in probably 40 minutes or less. And I've read reports that there was a C-130 gunship in the air in the area. And if you've ever seen one of those things do their work, one pass would have made quick, a quick finish. But one pass I think they're worried about collateral there. But one pass would have... Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't just fly a, a, an airplane, just bomb an area. They're no, no, no. If you've ever seen a C-130 gunship work, it's not. It's it's very precise. It, it's got a Gatling gun in it. They could have just targeted in on the embassy and on the attackers. Would there have been some collateral damage? Yes, but I don't believe it would have been extensive, like dropping a bomb on there or something of that nature. Could you have just done a rescue mission? Could you have just how, sent some That I don't know. I, I, I would have think you, if you had Marines in Tripoli, you probably could have sent something over to stop The biggest it. collateral damage with having you know a gunship going would have been they, the administration was responsible for killing an American. I think that would have been the biggest flaw. The administration is responsible for well, killing America. But actually, for I, agree, I agree. I agree with that completely. But I mean, directly through through our own people. That's when you know during wartime. I think that's when um, we hear about it the most. When it's someone an American who gets killed by our own screw ups, uh, Tillman, um, things like that. Because those are the biggest. To me, that's the again. There was another. Point. There was another point where they they couldn't tell the truth from the first from the first. They go down the slippery slope and they can't turn it around. Yeah, it's, it's uh, <laughs> I think it's more often true than not. And just about all you know, the sure. bad news, the bad news, you get it out there right away, you take the sting, it passes. The good stuff, you dribble it out to take the effect and keep it going for a while. 
So now, what you were referring to, Carlos, when we were talking about a day or two ago, was the fact that the under underneath all of this, and 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 again, it would be true whether we were talking about the Bush administration or the Obama administration. We really shouldn't be surprised anymore. The federal government is so big, and there is so much bureaucracy and so much ass covering that um, it, it essentially has become too big to do simple, logical, responsive things. So, yeah, where anybody of any political stripe could say, well, obviously the thing to do is rescue Americans who are in harm's way, I, I, I'm not so sure that this was all about the Obama administration's timidity or, or their fantasies. I think it was also about the size of the federal government. It's too damn big yeah, there's a mixture to do of, things effectively. Yeah, there's a mixture of that and a mixture of politics because if they wanted to, or anybody can say, let's just send a, a rescue mission out there well, what happens if politically to have like a, a like a Black Hawk Down type of event where it goes bad? So then, since this political climate, it would have been more well, people got killed or see, something, you know. But well, it I'm not just saying that. I'm saying that what, like one of the things we learned is that the emails went to 300 people, roughly. Why are there 300 people get, get getting an email about the fact that there's a there's an attack in in Benghazi? The chain of command cannot be that broad if you're going to have things done quickly and effectively. That's got to change. And there's probably also a sense of confusion when you say uh, that Obama pu uh, gives the, uh, puts out that they want a small footprint, but the foreign policy is world empire. So it's kind of like you're trying to be on right. the two extremes and there's not a precise... Um, this is like a 1,000 pound man wearing black and thinking that's a slimming color. You know, yeah. I, mean, I gotta be honest. It is kind of slimming when I'm on Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I don't think you're near, <laughs> look. You're not near 1,000. But I mean, it, it, you know, thanks, Jack. But do you see what we're saying, though? <laughs> I know. Do you see what we're saying? Though? I mean, feel it, better about yourself. We <laughs> are. We are, as Carlos said, we are essentially an empire that doesn't, that half the time doesn't want to be one.